this morning. <laughs> it's pretty much stopped raining. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Well, you didn't you didn't get your arc finished in time, that's for sure. <laughs> hey everybody, how the heck are you doing this fine day? Welcome on this hey. Saturday morning to our online business blueprint. I am thrilled you're joining us. My name is Steve Dotto. I'm here with Bob Poole, and uh, we are your hosts for today. Now, a lot of you, this is your first time with us on one of our webinars and one of our tutorials. So if if that's the case and you're in multiple platforms, some of you are on Facebook, some of you are on YouTube, but some of you are here inside of StreamYard. So just let us know if this is your first time with us. Uh, so we can uh, just so we can see how well our marketing activities are doing, bringing new people, <laughs> bringing new people into the fold. Um, and let me fill you in on what to expect today. Uh, we should be about an hour total today, maybe a little bit less. Actually, last time we did this in the live stream, we were over an hour, weren't we, Bob? We just ended had a lot of questions. Had a lot of questions. So yeah. depending on the amount, of, it's, it'll depend on you how long we go. But uh, if there's a lot of questions, we, we, we could hit the hour mark. Uh, the way that we do our webinars here at Dotto Tech is I pre-record the main demonstration. And then while that is running, we, we play it back for you. Uh, and while that's running, Bob and I will be in chat answering as many questions as we can. The reason we do it this way is, first of all, it, it, it allows me to create a better presentation, condense the information and make it smoother streamer and, and, and respect your time a little bit in that space. But also by asking questions while the video is running, we uh, answer the kind of the little hanging fruit questions and we increase the information density. We, we get more into the time that we have together. So it's all about respecting your time and respecting the content. So you can help us out if you ask a question, mark it with a Q, just put either a Q or a question mark at the start of it um, so that we can quickly identify it as a question. We can make sure that it's something that we need to address. Uh, one thing you will find with our community always is when you do ask questions, uh, other members of the chat will always jump in <clears throat> with answers and, and solutions. And uh, we have a pretty experienced group, typically speaking, when we when we present. So there's always a lot of good feedback. And I'm always impressed with the quality of the exchange in the chat. Uh, th so that is the, the kind of the, the basic overview. So what we're going to be looking at today is the building blocks of an online business, an online business blueprint. Most of you took our webinar, our previous webinar, or a lot of you did which was time for a change where we're talking about the challenges baby boomers and Gen Xers face in the online world or face in this world, it was much of it caused by the advances in the online world. Uh, and if you haven't yet taken that, we will be sharing a link with you and you can certainly go back. This webinar today is focused on boomers and Gen X. This is uh, our, our target market here in the gray wave and at Dotto Tech is helping baby boomers, helping Gen Xers uh, live their best third act or they call it the third act right third, third act. act yeah yeah three act play so that's our that's our goal today so uh we are thrilled you are here with us uh, is there anything what? that i need to address bob you've been monitoring yeah. the chat yeah no lots of first timers here lots and oh lots good of them. Yeah. Well, it's Welcome. great to it's great to have you. This is the first. Uh, hopefully, this is the first of many times that we 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 get together online. So, with that, let's uh, let's just jump into the tutorial. The tu the video is about thirty minutes, uh, and I take you through. I will tell you right now, off the top, we're not going to be selling you anything at the end of today's webinar. This isn't one of those webinars you don't have to gird your loins and be because we're so used to these webinars where somebody shows something and then pitches something. We will be pitching something, but it's something free. We have an online boot camp which we are starting, which is a really good and valuable training on building an online business. That also is free. We will be encouraging you to sign up for that when we are done today, but we weren't going to be asking you to get out your credit card and pay for anything at this point in this process. So just you can you can relax as far as that's concerned. With that, let us jump in and uh, take a look at the online business blueprint. I just have to find the file. I should have, I should have had it queued up. Well, I can't actually have it queued up faster, but just here we go. Just a half a sec. And there it is. Now we'll see you on the other side. I am very excited to, to present this to you today. And we've got, so <clears throat> let's dive right into things. The online business blueprint. Let's start with our goals for today. Now, my goal today is for by the end of this session for you to have a solid understanding of exactly how an online business works, what the pieces are, what the infrastructure of an online business is. And with the goal being that you can then take and project yourself into that equation. You can see exactly how an online business fits in how it can work for you and how you can be uh, the key, the key kind of driver 
in building and developing an online business of your own and understanding that this is something that you can do and perhaps inspiring you that it's something that you should be doing. And of course, the reason this is so important is the world has changed so much and the workplace isn't as welcoming to baby boomers and Gen Xers. We are increasingly being marginalized. If you haven't yet uh, participated in our Time for Change webinar, which is the last webinar that we delivered, we'll share a link with you so that you can watch the replay. But in that webinar, I go through the different challenges that we face as baby boomers and Gen X, and uh, I talk a lot about how we can take control of that situation ourselves. And there's still lots of opportunities for us because we have one thing that nobody else has. We have our experience. We've made our mistakes, and we are poised to take absolute advantage of everything that the online world has to offer. We just have to understand exactly what the opportunity looks like and then take the steps to, to, to implement it for ourselves. So let's take a quick recap of what I covered in Time for Change webinar, specifically relating to business, because one of the challenges that all baby boomers and Gen Xers have when we start thinking about building our own online business, especially those of us who spent our career working for someone else and the idea of running our own business or founding our own business is a bit intimidating because of one overarching fact is everything that we've been taught over the years is that most businesses fail. It's hard to run a business. It's hard to build a business. And so that's ingrained in our DNA now so that we think at this age to be starting a business of our own is folly, is something that is, is ill-conceived and we shouldn't even be thinking about. But that's an old way of thinking. See, the, in, in Time for Change, I go into great detail on this, but I'll just give you the Reader's Digest condensed version right now. The old way of building business was build and deploy. We had to put all of the pieces of the business in place before we launched the business. So we had to launch it fait accompli. And the, the, the issue then is if we've made any miscalculations along the way, it can be fatal. The results can be fatal if we've made a mistake somewhere along the ways. That's one of the main reasons so many businesses failed is it was such an, a large undertaking. We had to make so many assumptions without being able to test them as we were building out the business, that it was it was a crapshoot. It was difficult to make all of the right decisions to put the business in place or to be able to weather the storm that came as a result of making some mistakes early on in the business's life. The new way of doing business is seed and grow. It is we plant a seed and then we put it out there and we look at how the market reacts to it and then we modify it in order to best serve our customers and best suit our needs. So the mistakes that we made that could be fatal before are now big advantages because we make small mistakes early on in the process and we learn from them and then we pivot to in order to overcome those and, and turn those strengths, those weaknesses into strengths. And so the, 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 the path to success is far more practical. It's just, it's a lot easier to succeed. It's not easy to build an online business. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that this is something that you can kick your feet up on the couch and then it's easy to build an online business. It takes work. It takes energy. It takes effort. It takes experience, but it is not the crapshoot that it once was. You can be certain of a good degree of success just by following the basic tenets of putting forward your ideas, listening to what your audience has to say, and then reacting to it, and then delivering what they are asking for. And the speed of business on the internet, the speed of communication on the internet makes that practical in today's world. Back in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't practical. We, it took a long time for any idea to, to mature in the marketplace. Now, because of the pace of social networking and the internet, you get reaction almost instantly to anything you put out there. So seed and grow is the way of doing businesses. We still have the old standards, things that businesses are still based on relationships, the content that we deliver, communication with our customers, all of those skills and all of those, and all of our network and all of our communications, all of our alliances, they're still relevant. It's just now we are presenting them in a slightly different game. One of the great things about online business is I, I think a lot of us are of the opinion that it is an enormous world out there and it's hard to get our head around just what the opportunities are. And it's not as bad as you think. There's really only three types of businesses in the, in, in the online business world. 
their service, product, and knowledge. And what you are doing or what you can do or what you will do is going to fall into one of these three baskets almost without fail. So those of you who know exactly what it is you want to do, have a good idea of what your business might look like, you'll be able to quickly identify which basket you fall into. There might be a little bit of crossover, but you'll be able to determine very quickly which of these main baskets you fall into. For those of you, and there's many, who like the idea of building an online business but don't have any idea of what it is you should be doing or can do, and that is a, a large part of the community that's listening to this tutorial right now, rest assured that what you end up doing will end up in one of these baskets as well. And this, in understanding the baskets is maybe the first step towards you starting to recognize what it is maybe you should be doing or can do. So the first is the service basket. This is a very traditional business. Uh, people who service and help other people get their job done. People like accountants, consultants, EAs, different support type people. Anybody who supports other businesses and does it either as a contract or as a fee for service or as an employee, that's one type of business, the service business. Then there's the product business. Now, the product business uh, has changed a lot because of the online world. Certainly, it still is if you manufacture product, if you build a product, that is obviously in the product space. But you don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be your product anymore that you build. We have affiliate marketing where you s represent and you promote other people's products and you receive effectively a commission on the sales. There's a drop shipping business where you, again, promote the sales of a product, but you have a direct relationship with that manufacturer and they ship it to the customer. And again, you are paid a commission on all of the sales. There's the really exciting world of Amazon FBA, where it's called, it's fulfillment by Amazon, where you source products yourself, either by manufacturing them yourself or by sourcing them. And then you ship them to Amazon, you create all the promotional materials and packaging, and you use Amazon's amazing retail, online retail and distribution system to sell the product in different nations, in different uh, country groups or around the world. Or you can do traditional manufacturing and sourcing of products as well. So it, and where you build your own e-commerce website and you sell products and ship them yourselves. There, all of that falls into the product catchment. A lot of traditional businesses in that space. And then there's the knowledge basket. And that's the one that I live in. It's where you we deliver information, where we do auth uh, authors are that in that catchment, people who deliver online courses, trainers, people who run communities, anything where we are educating you and teaching you about any topic that is in the knowledge basket. And what you do is going to fall in to one of these three baskets. So I'm wondering if that's already starting to give some of you some clarity as far as, uh, especially those of you who know exactly what it is you want to do, uh, it gives you a little bit more clarity on how online business might work for you. One of the biggest challenges most people have who are considering building an online business is there's this yawning chasm between what it is they want to do and how they go about actually getting their customers. The customer journey of the discovery process and people actually finding out who you are and what you're offering in the incredible amount of noise and the vastness of the internet, that's a little bit intimidating. And most people who come from traditional business models or have worked for other people, this is a big issue. This is something that's probably given you pause already, some concern, and maybe a little bit of anxiety saying, how in the world am I ever going to get my message out there? How am I going to find my customer? And the customer journey online is a fascinating journey. It starts with discovery. Now, the beauty of the internet is it facilitates each step of the customer journey for us in a lot of ways that streamline the entire process. But the first is discovery and discovery is, well, I can certainly understand why you, it's a concern for so many of you. It's one of the things that I wake up every morning thinking about doing well is making sure that the content that I create, the message that I put out there, that I'm getting it in front of new people and the right people. And we do that through content marketing. Primarily, we do it through giving information, giving, letting people know exactly what it is we have to offer and uh, what we can bring to the table for them. And we can have a podcast, we can have videos on YouTube, we can do advertising, we can use a blog, we can use social media. There's a lot of different ways, obviously, many different ways that 
our audience can discover us. But that's an important part, a very important part of the of building an online business is getting through the discovery phase and something that we concentrate on and something that we really concentrate on. And fortunately, it's one of the things that the internet is really good at. Services like Google and YouTube and even Facebook, one of the things that they are strongest at is marrying the right people, businesses to the right customers and understanding you and facilitating that entire discovery process. Once you've been discovered, once you've got somebody that knows a little bit about you, then we go through the KLT. I don't know if this is just a, an online business term, but we say in the online business world that in order for someone to purchase from you, to become your customer, they have to know you, they have to like you, and they have to trust you. And that's the modern customer journey. First of all is discovery. How do they, do they know you and what do you give them so that they can understand what value you can deliver? And we can do that through the content with, that we share. Then they have to like you. So you have to give them value. You have to give them value. You have to listen to their needs and you have to honor the relationship. You have to tell them that they're valued and uh, that builds the like. And most of you who have are here in this webinar right now have gone are in the middle of this funnel with me. We can use this as an example. The discovery phase happened probably through a Facebook ad or through some webinar or something that you've participated in before, or perhaps a YouTube video, but you've discovered me through the content publishing that we've put forward. It could be as something as something like YouTube videos, or it could be something that was absolutely designed to bring you to this webinar. It could be advertising, but now you're here and you're sitting down and you're listening to me. And now we're in the getting to know me phase and you will decide at some point in this process, if you like me, and if you like me, it's not if you like me, but if you appreciate the content, if you like the message, if you like the technique and the style, and you are in alignment with the values that we put in place, if those things all land properly, then we are moving through the customer journey when building a relationship. You might never end up buying something from me, but you can then start to become a part of my community. And I have the opportunity at that point to do business with you. And the final step is trust. And that is earned over time. It's not something that we're going to get right away. And it's increasingly difficult to earn trust online. I think trust is the most valuable commodity that you can build online because there are so many untrustworthy people on the internet and we're all painted by the same brush until we've proven that we are different. How do we build trust? We build trust through things like consistency, consistently delivering valuable content, following up and doing what you say and delivering good quality, high quality training. And uh, all of those things together will ultimately build trust. Now, if you can do though, if you can follow that journey, then you have an opportunity to do business. And that is the customer journey in the online world. Now, just to give you a quick kind of boil it back to us, and I'll give you some of the pieces of the customer journey that we typically experience with our, with our community is we do something called Webinar Wednesday, which is a weekly tutorial webinar on content marketing or productivity. And we've done it for, I think, eight years now for a very long time. We've done nearly 300 free tutorial webinars, the same kind of caliber as what you're seeing here right now. And we've delivered that content And every week when we deliver that content, we do a Q&A, we answer as many questions as we can, and we have a great dialogue happening with our community. Now think about what this does for us. People are interested in learning about, say, how to use Google Calendar more effectively. So they sign up for one of my webinars and they start to get to know us. They start to get to know who we are. They decide whether or not they like my teaching style. If the content is valuable and on point, then they begin to like. And we, uh, they go through that process of they then return for a second webinar. And now they start to see that we consistently deliver and we deliver what we say. And they, you start to hear what other people are saying inside of that community. And all of that leads to trust. And that is what we're going for. Once we've built a place where we, you trust us, then we have the opportunity to do business. And so I, my experience is a hundred percent this process, this customer journey, know and trust. And we've got tangible proof and also great examples of exactly that, how we can deliver our content and our product into that path. Now, one of the major themes that we're going to be talking about through this entire, through as long as you're with me, as long as you follow this, if you decide to sign up for our online bootcamp later on, 
these will be messages that we deliver on an ongoing basis. But trust, as I've already mentioned, is one of the major themes. Building trust. If you can get to the point where the people who you are trying to sell to trust you, you have done the lion's share of work that you need to do as far as building your building your bona fides with your customers. Being consistent. One of the biggest challenges content creators have, people who create content and use content in order to uh, facilitate the discovery and the knowledge process, is we have to deliver a lot of content. And we have to deliver it consistently because there's a lot of competition out there. And if people start to what we deliver as far as the style that we deliver our content, then they start to rely on us and the relationship grows. But we have to consistently keep feeding that beast. That's one of the big challenges that content creators have. It's also one of the areas that AI is having the greatest impact for content creators because it's making it far easier for us to consistently create content. But more on that as we go down the path. And the other main theme that we have is conversations. What we create, when we create our product, we don't do it in a vacuum. Back in the day when it was build and deploy for building businesses, you envisioned what your product looked like, you envisioned who your customer was, and yes, you could do some market research, but it was difficult to do really good market research without a massive budget and specialties in those days. But so you were basically building what you thought your customer was interested in and hoping that you were doing a good job of it. Today, we do it through conversations. We post content on a topic. We listen to the questions people are asking. We answer their questions. And those conversations lead us to their pain. And their pain tells us what products and services we can deliver to them that are worth them purchasing. It's a beautiful conversation to have. But it's also an incredibly unique opportunity that the internet gives us. And if we have trust of our community so that they will actually tell us, Steve, this is a problem that we have with this particular doing this particular thing. And I go, I know how to do that. Or I have got a great idea of how that can be uh, how that can be addressed. Let me deliver a webinar or a course or a podcast on that topic and see if it serves you and then listen to what your feedback is. And that conversation leads us to success over and over again. So those are major themes that I believe all online businesses need to constantly keep at the top of their mind. The, the, the business system that I believe all online businesses need to follow or can follow is something I call a social system. And the social system has the five P's. The pillars of a online business include the platform, the process, the product, the promotion, and profit. Those five P's, if you can address each one of those five P's, you have all of the pieces in place that you need to have a successful business. So let's go through them. And so that you can, this is where we talk about the infrastructure of an online business, the, the building blocks that uh, you have to address, that you have to put in place to run and build a successful online business. And it all starts with determining what product you're going to be selling. If that's a product is, of course, what do you sell? Or what do you do? And there's going to be a development process. You have to be concerned with how you deliver it and how you support it. And for a lot of you, this is a great black hole at this time. But you need to ultimately have clarity on exactly what your product is and what you sell. So product is number one. Now, for those of you who are really concerned that you don't know what your product is, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we actually have a process that we go through, a, a workshop that we go through that helps those of you who only know that you want to do an online business but don't know what it is you want to do, where we take and we work you through a process where you look at your experience and the things you've done in the past, the opportunities that are out there online and what you would like to do. And we create a Venn diagram and we find that meeting ground in the middle to determine exactly what online business might be best for you. It's a process, but it does work and it will help you along the way. You aren't on your own trying to figure this out. We'll help you as we progress. The second P in building an online business or an online business is the platform. And the platform is perhaps the most important term that I need you to come to terms with. The platform is what we say and what we share. And it is ever so important for content marketers and for online marketers, because this is the content that we publish to the social platforms, to YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. And it's the content that we publish in our podcast or in live streams, webinars and blogs. But this is where, first of all, discovery happens 
because all of these platforms are social platforms that we can reach out to people who have not discovered us in the past and will now get to know us and begin that customer journey of no like and trust and it all begins through the platform it's where we declare our value it's where we declare our priorities it's where we declare our ethos it's where people get to know us and to and ultimately they will we will build the trust by consistently publishing excellent content that speaks to their needs and their wants on the on the different social platforms and to be an effective to build an effective online business, you have to come up with an effective platform strategy. This is how you get discovered, and this is how we build our relationships. Then you need a back end for any online business, and that's the process. This is how we do it. And these are the systems that we have to put in place. And the systems are, some of them you'll be familiar to you, other ones might not be so much, but they're things like your CRM. Now we can call the CRM a lot of different things. It can be your mail list manager, but this is where we ha- where we process and we store information about our different leads, our customers, we create our mail list. This is where we, how we deliver our newsletter and how we communicate on an ongoing basis with our customers and ultimately, in many cases, this is where you're ultimately going to ask for business. For people who do what we do, which is sign people up for online courses or communities, there'll be a point where our CRM is sending out emails, inviting them, inviting you to join us in our, in, in, in one of our communities. And that's where the business ends up happening. So these systems have to be efficient. They have to be well designed and they have to complement our platform. And one of the other things, by the way, our platform does is it constantly generates new names and it builds our list for it. And so the content that we publish in our platform and our process, they have to be married together. So we build some really nice, they might seem elaborate systems, but they are, they're nicely integrated systems where one part of our process talks to the other part. Then we have all of our publishing tools, how we publish our website or the, how we create graphics, how we create videos and audios. How did I create this video here that we are looking at right now? Those are all the tools that we use in the process. And then we have our social media tools, the tools that allow us to have conversations and understand exactly what people are saying about us and making sure that we are on top of the conversations that are happening in the online world, as well as other tools like payment systems and uh, all of that is built in to e-commerce systems is built in to your process. So we've now gone through three P's. We've gone through the product that we're going to be selling, the platform and the process. The next phase, so important. And this is an area, <clears throat> this is probably what the area that most online businesses come up short because the, usually I would say because of a lack of confidence, but this is the promotion phase. This is how our customers find us. And this is where we shine a light on exactly what it is we do through marketing, through list building. Most of you who are here today came because of paid traffic. I ran Facebook ads, which many of you saw, which caused you to sign up for one of our webinars in the first place. So that's all done through the promotion phase. And it's the content that you create that promotes people that that is self aggrandizing in our content that we're selling as far as as far as most of the content that we deliver. It's educating and edifying our community. But occasionally you got to boast. You got to say, I'm going to deliver something which is valuable to you, which is basically holding ourselves up a, a little bit on a pedestal and saying, come and sign up, which is exactly what I did with this webinar. I, I said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to teach you something which is going to make good use of your time that you are going to be interested in. So the promotion phase is ever so important. And then of course, at some point that turns into pure advertising where we're actually trying to sell whatever product it is we are going to deliver. And the final stage is the profit stage, which is where we, how we make our money, where we actually sell and all of the infrastructure and the pieces that we have in place. Now, one of the cool things about online business is no two online businesses make their money the same way. There are so many different revenue streams that you can attach to and so many different models, income models that you can adhere to that it's, 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 I find it to be fascinating and more than a little bit of fun. You can do, of course, traditional product sales, but I make a lot of my money through advertising income, through the videos that I display on YouTube. I earn advertising income from advertisers running ads on my videos. That's a unique kind of a unique newer 
revenue stream that was never available to the average person in the past. You could also do sponsorship and product placement if you've built a big following as far as your platform is concerned. You can charge consulting fees. You can do crowdfunding where you go out to a community and you ask them to fund and underwrite a project that you're doing. And that is increasingly popular and it can be delivered in a variety of different really exciting models that benefit both the customer and the content creator. Uh, there's affiliate income where we represent other people's products. We talk about them in, in blogs or in videos, and we help you make a purchase decision. And if you make the purchase decision that's in the favor of XYZ company, then XYZ company gives us a commission. And then there's, of course, the gig economy where people pay you for your time. And certainly people in the service business will can certainly generate income through the gig economy. And there are other models as well. But all of these are decisions that you make and opportunities you have. Now, Remember when I talked about the fact that we plant a seed and then we pivot? I can tell you that there's lots of times that I have planted a seed and thought that I was going to come out at some point in the product, in the profit uh, end of the business at one of these, one of these tiers and ended up actually pivoting and making money from that idea in an entirely different way. That's the beauty of the seed and grow philosophies we're able to modify and to adjust in order to find success. We do that by making little mistakes, by making offers, by listening to what the customer has to say, and then pivoting and changing our ultimate delivery to suit their needs most effectively. Let's take a look at that seed and grow once again, because now we've got the pieces of the social system all in place. Online business today, starts with an idea. You create an idea, you publish that idea, you wait for a reaction to that idea, and then you take that reaction and it leads you to your next step. Now this might be rinse and repeat. We might create some more content along the same line, a little bit more refined, and then wait for the reaction and then pivot and react or promote to it. But this process we do over and over again until we finally reach our end goal. Now that doesn't mean that we don't start with an idea of what we might be wanting to sell at the end. If you are thinking that you are going to be teaching an online course on some topic, you've got an idea of what that course is going to look like and what it, what, what it is you want to teach your community right at the beginning. And you'll start to publish content in that space. But the reaction of your community might change the ultimate product that you end up delivering or the level of the product or the pricing of the product or even the actual content or the product itself might shift as you listen to what your community is interested in needs. One of the things that I teach in online business over and over again is to look for pain. It's to look for things that get in the way, uh, the pain that your customers have, the pain that your community has, if you have an answer and can help them solve the pain. People will pay for you to take the pain away. So sometimes what we think is causing pain in our community to our customers isn't what it actually is. But by listening to what they're telling us, we can then determine the truth of that and then we can adjust our product offering to in order to meet those in order to meet those challenges. I said in the first webinar that when I look at people building an online business, if you have the experience and the skills in order to to succeed, if you've got the the underpinnings that you need, it's not a question of if you're going to succeed, it's when, providing that you follow a ask and answer mentality where you ask questions, where you provide answers to the questions that others are asking of you and you listen to your customers and you don't get married to a concept, get married to a path, but instead look at it constantly with an open mind and be prepared to pivot and modify the content and what you're going to deliver to suit your customers' needs. I know I make it sound simple. I know it, it, it might sound almost too simple, but it is difficult to do. It's difficult for all of us to park our preconceptions and actually listen to what the marketplace wants. But if you can do that, then the results can be profound. So that's really the story. Back at the, when we started a little over half hour ago, I guess, I said my goal was for you to understand what an online business looks like. And I hope that we've covered that. I've talked to you about the types of businesses that are out there, service, product, and knowledge, I've talked to you about the journey that customers will typically go on and the key themes that successful online businesses pay attention to, building trust, 
building consistency and having conversations with your customers. And then I talked a little bit about the infrastructure that we put in place, the tools that we put in place, platform, which is what we say, what we share, process, how we do it, promotion, how our customers discover us and find us and profit, how we make money. And then the constant path that we follow to seed and grow, plant an idea, modify it, listen to the feedback and adjust. That's basically how I believe online businesses work. So have I succeeded in giving you a good solid understanding of what an online business looks like? I hope I have. And if I have, and it's something that you're still intrigued in and you want to know more about, then I have what I think is just a fantastic offer. We are going to be delivering our Building Your Online Business Bootcamp, BYOB. This is a one month tutorial, which has about 10 lessons in it, eight to 10 lessons, where I take you chapter and verse through all of these different themes that I talked about in today's tutorial. And it is a, other people charge $2,000, $2,500 for this training. It's that rich and that complete. And if anybody's here in the room now that has, uh, that's taken in the past, they will, they will validate that we deliver this kind of value. It is, we will walk you through each piece you need to know in order to build an online business. Now, why do we do it for free? This is an important question because I could be spending a lot of my trust equity with you right now by over promising and by giving something that looks too good to be true. The reason that we deliver this for free is we have a paid community called the Gray Wave, where we teach baby boomers and Gen Xers how to build an online business. And those baby boomers and Gen Xers that are members of our community support each other. It's a wonderful nurturing community where entrepreneurs bounce ideas off each other, learn from others' mistakes, ask questions, take courses together, and, work, and basically support each other in the growth of their online businesses. We will be promoting that at the end of the online business blueprint. But I only want people who have a good idea that they actually want to build an online business and have an idea and an understanding of what's going to be involved, of what kind of effort they have to make and what kind of commitment they have to make in order to build their online business. So this is, uh, is a precursor to that to that community. And if you take the building your online business bootcamp and you decide that you're not ready to build an online business yet, then you've gotten a terrific free education and something that you can park and maybe do sometime in the future. We have a lot of people who've taken the bootcamp several times in the past before they finally sign up for the community. It, but it is, that's the reason that we make it free is we want you to make a good decision. And we believe that if I follow my themes of trust, consistency, and conversations, that I will can build trust with you. I will consistently deliver great content in it. You will learn to really appreciate it. And we, you will have the conversations that will lead you to making the best decisions. So that is our Building Your Online Business Bootcamp. We'll be sharing a link for you to sign up. You can sign up now. It starts very soon. It starts in early April. And I invite you to join us. From a practical nature, the boot camp itself, we deliver two tutorials per week. They are recorded, so you don't have to take them live. And there is a Facebook group where you ask questions and you can bounce ideas off of others and get to know the rest of the community, which is, which I'm sure you will appreciate and you will get to, you'll get to hear other people's challenges, other people's ideas as they build out their ideas for an online business. I got to tell you, I'm really proud of the building your online business boot camp. It is a terrific resource. And this year, it's going to be even better. I've had to put my nose back to the grindstone and completely redesign the entire course because, of course, AI has raised its head and said, Steve, everything is different. You better start integrating AI in everything you talk about because it is touching every facet of online business. So this year's or this session of the Building Your Online Business Bootcamp has a lot of fresh content all about the world of AI. And it's going to be exciting to deliver it and to see how it lands with the community. So with that, let's let's get to the Q&A. Here we go. We are back. There we go. Good. Phone's going crazy, Bob. Everybody's signing up. We have yes, a nice yes, great yes. system here. Sorry, I was muted yep. there for a second. This is good. Good. We had Michael just join us and Kenny and Dave, David, Dave, and uh, who else we got here? Oh, they're just, we just signed up. Yeah, we go. Oh, this is great. It makes me happy. Justin, welcome <laughs> aboard, Hugh. 
I love getting ping ping. It's better when we're charging money than the than the free sign up, but the free sign ups are good too. <laughs> it means that we are on point with the content that we delivered here today. That is super. I so I hope that you guys get, have a, a much better idea. This this webinar for those of you who are new to us does a couple things. Uh, it first of all hopefully educates you on the topic at hand, which we're trying to educate you on. But it also begins that know, like, and trust journey that I was that was talking about. That's so important. It, it, it gets you to start to know us. And you've seen in the webinar that we've delivered, the style of content that we deliver, you've seen the energy and the presentation, uh, the, the kind of the way that we present our content, uh, because all of our tutorials are structured almost exactly as this webinar is, has been put together. So we've, it's, been, it's been a good object case for a lot of what we teach in, in the Building Your Online Business Bootcamp you're getting to know us. And then some of you have decided that you're trusting us to the point that you're willing to take the next step, which for me, is a win. It's a it's a logical step on the customer journey, and it's us building a relationship and building towards that that trust and getting to know each other. I should sing a song from uh, what is that? Uh, Sound of Music. Getting to know you. Getting I should know. Sing. I should break into song at this point. Instead of breaking into song, Steve, how about if we answer the questions that were asked that we that we there started? We how about that, Bob? We can do that. Yes. Let's go back here. Um, so there, so I, 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 you I, answered I this one. Starred. So yeah. yeah. Yep. You answered this, but if you want to talk again about it. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I mentioned that we have webinar Wednesday. Uh, you can join us anytime at webinar Wednesday here. I'll throw the link in as well. Webinar yeah, Wednesday is our free tutorial and our free yeah, webinar. This week I'm talking about, uh, some tools, uh, desktop tools for productivity. And I'll just put the, uh, link in there. There we go. Too. I just posted it for you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. okay so, um, He's, Tony says, sounds like a lot of tech to promote today. How do we do our business without spending a fortune? Tony, you can, you can, you can kind of enter this, you can start to build your own business, your business. And I, I know I've, from watching the chat that you've got a fairly mature business already. You've already spent a lot of money on a product that you've invented and designed. And you've, you've already got the experience of putting it into Amazon. It sounds like, and, and, and you recognize the challenges of selling low priced items in uh it's something like the amazon fulfillment by amazon programs um so the uh so you're much farther down the road than others uh but you the, most of the tools that you end up using you can start out fairly inexpensively or even free versions as you build out your system but there you know there's a cost of doing business and so and and it sounds to me like if you've got i think it was doorstops that you sell and they're probably $50 in that kind of range having a one sh one product business like that that you sell um it's a unique challenge and it's it's going to be difficult to to find the margin in that uh you mean i mean you've got to be really concentrating on your cost of goods transportation is having to just kill you recently so, so, you know, if you aren't, if you, if you don't have an angle of that business where you can build your margin, your own e-commerce store where you're selling it yourself and you're promoting it yourself and you're getting full pop on it, uh, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a challenge. Uh, but you'll learn the basic tenets inside of the bootcamp. I encourage you to sign up and, uh, and we might be able to spark your imagination and spark your ideas. A product like yours, you said that you built it originally to help kids, prevent kids from catching their fingers in the doors. Well, you've got a story to tell them yeah. and you've got a theme. You can, then you can, you can do content marketing around all sorts of safety things as far as children are concerned. And you can be a part of that. And you could do affiliate sales for other products that are related. You can find ways to build your business by, because your customer is going to be anybody who buys your doorstop for the reason of protecting their kids fingers they probably want electrical covers for their uh for their um for their uh, for their electric sockets they probably want gates for their doors they probably want surveillance systems they're going to be interested in all sorts of things that help keep their kids safer so you can then become the heart of a community talking about that that's the what I just went through that kind of journey that's the sort of thing that's the sort of process that you're going to learn to do yourself inside of the gray wave or inside of the, the building your online business bootcamp. So, um, Tony and David asked similar questions about, um, being small. How do you find partners or employees or that are willing to help you, uh, build your business? You do it through networking. You do it through asking questions and getting to know each other. 
not so much for the building your online business bootcamp, but later on down the road, when we talk about our gray wave, our, our community, where we, which is the ultimate kind of the ultimate destination for some of you who are, who are following this path. And this is our paid community. One of the biggest strengths of it is the community itself is the experience of others that are in it. You do it by networking. You do it by finding people with common, uh, you know, with, with common interests and in, in skills to fill each other's, to fill uh, each other's gaps. Um, it's, it's, it's old school networking, but now we do it online. So, uh, homesick uh, Mac. <laughs> yes, I put this up because, uh, homesick, you make, you made me smile. Uh, first of all, yes, you're perfect age. You've got a niche, you know, the product you want, but oh my God, what a crowded space guitar teaching music. Holy shit. That is so much. And when you do an online search for it, there is so much out there. You actually don't let that discourage you. Let it encourage you because people are interested and people are willing to build a relationship with music teachers and instructors and guitar instructors online people. There is so much potential. The, 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 the size of the marketplace in the online world is so vast that there's room. There's always room for one more. It's like that potato chip. We'll make more. Uh, but there's always room for one more. So yes, it's a crowded niche, but you're unique. You've already developed, you're 64. You've developed your style. You've got a certain way. You've got a, you've got a skill set, which is, which has carried you up to this point. Translate people want, are looking for that online and there's not, everybody isn't going to be your customer, but you're going to be able to find your customers by telling your story online and building yourself out online. So yes, I, even though there's a crowded space, it's not so crowded that there's not room for homesick Mac. So, uh, Risa Aressa David says, I currently have an Etsy shop. I've had it for 10 years, but would like to grow the business. Would this BYOB be able to help me grow? I think it's, you know, it's free, Ressa. The techniques and the skills that we teach, I think, are going to open your eyes to some different ways of doing things and approaching things. I think you are the perfect candidate. And I like even, even more uh, than just perfect for you. You're perfect for us because you've got a whole bunch of experience in a space that a lot of people are going to be interested in. There's going to be people who should be on Etsy or are on Etsy that are much earlier on in the journey that are part of the boot camp, and you're going to be able to add value to them. So it's a win-win situation for you. We'll teach you a whole bunch of new stuff, but you'll be a resource for the others. That's that's the nature of these communities that we build. So you says, uh, is affiliate marketing uh does it provide a good uh, return on investment? Meaning, is it worth the time and effort or should I try a different method? Affiliate marketing, uh, Hugh, is, uh, can, be, um, can be the main income. There's a, there's a couple of great resources online. Uh, uh, Pat Flynn teaches, uh, you know, his, his teaches it in his, in his system. He, he basically tells you that you can build your entire business in affiliate marketing and you can't. Uh, you can if you've got the story to tell and you've got the imagination and the energy. Um, for others, it's a really nice sideline. It's a nice sidebar. So we were talking about the doorstops. Uh, if you're selling your product, but you're affiliate marketing other people's products, then it cre it creates a nice it creates a nice complement to your existing business. There's a lot of ways to approach it, but affiliate marketing is a great first step because your investment is low. Your investment is in the content you create and the trust equity that you build in the online space. So as long as you're recommending good products and you're actually making good recommendations for people, you can continue to build trust and build a relationship with your community. So affiliate marketing is a terrific place to start. And it's one of the places we recommend people start. So many people start, especially if you're into podcasting or YouTube videos, affiliate marketing is a really good starting point. It might not be your end destination, but it's always worth starting with. So uh, Michael says, I'm a key consultant with a cancer survivor exercise nonprofit that offers clinically approved remote exercise classes. First location, Portland, Oregon is thriving with 300 plus active participants. That's great. Will BYOB help me develop next step? Community yeah. selection and growth is the key. Because, the, but you have to, because you are already doing this, you're building a platform. You get, you've got to get your story out there. You've got to tell your story. You've got to reach a constituency. And then you've got to support that constituency. And that's exactly what an online business is. It does the net goal, the destination that people are looking for with, from building your online business doesn't necessarily have to be dollars and cents. It can be impact in other ways. 
And if for you, it would be getting active participants who can benefit from the services that you offer. So that's your goal. That's that's what you're going to be working towards. But you're going to be going through the same process of of discovery, getting people to find you, getting them to to like the idea or or buy into the concept of what you're offering, and then trust you enough to sign up for the program, and then uh, be engaged enough to participate. Same process whether we're selling something or whether you're doing something like like your project. It'd be great to have you on board. Uh, David came back and says that he uh, he's recently 56 years old with 25 years in tech and cybersecurity. He w wants to do his own thing. So he has a large LinkedIn following yeah. because, yeah. So this is a problem a lot of us have. He needs a revenue stream and he needs it, you know, within six months. So he's like, that's his challenge. What do you do? I'm not going to tell you that's going to be easy. Yeah. What, what, I, I believe that building an online business, that you can build a good on solid online business, uh, that you will have success. Putting a time limit on it creates all sorts of pressures, and there's so many things that we can't anticipate. So I'm not going to tell you that you can do it inside of six months. Um, typically speaking, somebody who have, faces what you're doing will, will will start as a side hustle. They'll they'll have they'll have a secure income of some sort, and they'll do and they'll start their online venture as a side hustle, which is a a much more conservative way of doing it rather than just jumping in with both feet. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell you a bill of goods saying, yeah, no problem. You can make money inside of six months. Six months is a pretty tight time frame. It is a tight time frame. It seems like a long time, but it goes by pretty darn quickly as you're building stuff. And as you're building your reputation, the good news is you're in a good space and you already have relationships and you've got a, and you've already got a beginning of a platform. You've got LinkedIn, you know, the platform you're working on, you've got a lot of the pieces in place. Um, so you've got a lot going for you. But your biggest concern, your biggest fear is still going to be a hurdle that you have to overcome. And I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy. John says, I'm a retired CFO starting a bookkeeping service. John's bookkeeping. How important is it to target a niche? It's always going to help you target a niche. So, so John, you can do, you could, but your niche can be kind of some different things. It's, it's, it's allowing you to tell the story and to focus on a subset of the online space. So your niche could be, small businesses in your in your area you might you might decide that you want face to face so even you wouldn't be niche as far as a business you'd be niche as far as an area or it could be going into a sector or going into a type of business startup businesses or or bit or uh for for companies that are in transition or uh, looking to be acquired there's a lot of different you can focus on different niches and then you can what you can do is you can create some content that gets people to know you in that space. So the more vertical the niche, the better story you have to tell, the more impact you can deliver to a potential client by giving them something in your on in your discovery phase that's of value to them. So I would always there's a do, what, do we say niche or niche? Uh, but there's a there's a kind of a popular, we have our little sayings in the online world, but they say the riches are in the niches. Uh, so the more that you can verticalize, the more that you can narrow your focus, the more impact and the more you can charge and the more success you can have. And that's counterintuitive to us in a lot of cases, those of us building a business, because we're looking to present our business to as large a market as possible with the th thought being, you know, if we, if we, if we offer it in front of enough people, we, you know, even if just a 1% of the people accept our offer, then we're okay. Whereas if I only offer it to this percentage of the people, I might need 10%, but that's quite often the way to go is, is narrowing down and niching. So your instincts uh, to ask are good, and I would seriously think about finding a niche that's going to work for you. Okay. So Wayne says, after a career of helping CEOs and their teams to create a more meaningful and successful business, I have a huge amount of content and custom tools to develop self-awareness and awareness of social dynamic and groups, all to help people navigate and create a meaningful, joy joyful, and fulfilling life. Where do I start? Wayne, you you start by sharing. And uh, for you, I mean, I would say start by sign up for the boot camp and and be patient. Don't have a preconceived notion of the of of exactly what your business is going to look like. One of the beauties of the boot camp is it does allow you to kind of workshop and spitball ideas. And the beauty of uh, of our boot camp is it's, there's a Facebook group where you can float ideas to other people who are interested in what you're doing and and going through the same decision making process at the same time so they can give you a lot of feedback 
But for somebody like you, you're going to be a pu content publisher. You're going to be a content creator. You're going to be creating a podcast or videos or books or workshops or online live streams. You're going to be sharing your knowledge. And one of the things we teach, and it's going to be, it, it might be, it might be a, an epiphany for you. It might be something that scares you is we teach you to give away your best stuff. That's one of the, th that's one of the things we, the, the, the lesson that I just gave you, I didn't hold anything back in the boot camp. We hold nothing back. We teach you all of the secrets and we don't say you have to sign up for the, for the, uh, for our paid course or our paid community in order to learn what it is we're going to teach. We have faith that the value we give and the value of our community is enough that if you believe, if you are impressed by the quality of content that we deliver by giving you our best stuff, that you will then recognize the value of being a part of this community, having constant access to that, to that uh, support. And you will be in a very similar space. Give away your best stuff in some form and then figure out exactly what your uh, what your revenue model is going to be. Uh, it, it's, you've, you've got, again, most of the pieces in place. Your experience is so very valuable. Uh, but don't worry that you don't right now have a, a mechanism that you can see that's going to be successful. That's a process that you're going to go through. And the seed and grow idea. You've got a seed. You can plant a seed. I'm going to tell people about this then listen to what they have coming back and then you start to react to that it's a it's a dance that we're going to be doing that you'll be doing with your with your future customers charles says i'm in the idea phase i like to write and i want to explore a lot of different interests i really don't want to niche down any thoughts about how to approach that yeah if you're not in a rush uh, you know charla that's there's nothing i i think that's great um ultimately something's going to speak to you Ultimately, something will you you either opportunity will raise its head or or need. Uh, there'll be there'll be something that might that will help you focus on what will ultimately pay the bills if that's if that's indeed the the, the case that you're in. But noodling and, and and throwing lots of different ideas out there, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing now as long as you don't as long as you don't aren't uh, as long as you aren't addicted. To that, a lot of people, a lot of us get addicted to the, the we call it the magpie, right? The uh, magpie uh, uh, syndrome, where you everything bright and shiny, yeah. you're willing to change channels all of the time. At some point, you have to settle down. But uh, there's nothing wrong with the idea phase, and most of you are going to be in it. And if you don't have something that you know right now, then you're in the idea phase. I'd say the vast majority of people on this webinar right now are in the idea phase. Says, says, uh, he says, why does it seem like YouTube filters its search results down to the same few content creators while leaving out the multitudes? Says it does and it doesn't. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're, you will get, uh, YouTube will deliver to you the results of the YouTubers of the content that others have validated as being valuable, that you validated as being valuable, that you've indicated an interest in. Uh, it doesn't pick favorites. YouTube has one goal. YouTube wants you to find what you're looking for and watch the darn video. That's all they care about. If you watch the video, then they're able to run their ads. And they and if you watch it for a long time, it means that it was successful, that they, they delivered the right content to you. And then, then, and that, that then encourages them to share that creator's content with the next person who meets your profile and has your interests. So YouTube, I don't believe for a second that YouTube plays favorites. Uh, YouTube's, YouTube's favorite is they want to make money and they want to make money by keeping people on platform, finding what they're looking for, watching the videos. And so that they, when they, when they have a question, they don't go to Google, they go to YouTube and look for the answer and they trust YouTube to watch the videos and they're looking for more and more engagement all the time. I think we're about done. I'll just put this up there. Lois says, thanks so much for this great encouragement to move forward with an online business. I love it. And is it really Lois Lane or is that a nom de plume? Uh, and by the way, um, yeah, so Homesick Mac signed up. <laughs> yes, we've got a whole bunch of people that have signed up. That's yeah. awesome sauce. Yeah, that's a. Uh, well, let's wrap it up. Good. We're just like about, almost right at the top of the hour. So listen, the entire process that we're going through, you guys are in a great position for. Yeah. If you do, those of you that are signed up for the online business bootcamp, because what we teach is discovery, how you find people, and most of you 
didn't find me through our previous work. Most of you found us through ads that we ran on Facebook. Now you don't have to, somebody did ask, do you have to run Facebook ads? There was a question about that I saw. Mm -hmm. Do you have to run Facebook ads? No, there's lots of ways that you can organically grow your marketplace. But at some point, uh, uh, many of us who uh, have more mature online businesses are going to accelerate the process through the use of what's called paid traffic, paying for Facebook ads. So I, I spend money on getting you to this point, but this is the beginning of the funnel. So you get to you get to go on the entire customer journey with us if you follow us right to the end. Even if you don't buy from us in the end, you will see every phase, every stage of the no like and trust and the building our relationship uh, described in the tutorials that we deliver. But you will also it's also art impersonating life because you will also have uh, you will also have the uh, the experience of being the customer that I am indeed taking through this process at the same time. So it's kind of an, an interesting an interesting uh, kind of almost reality show that we that we end up running as we go through this. So that's uh, so I'm excited for you and I appreciate how engaged you've been and how open you've been and how willing you've been to engage in conversation and uh, we don't diminish at all the value of the trust that you've given to us now by signing up, giving us your email address and saying, yes, you're going to participate in the boot camp. Show up, show up with an open mind and open heart, being polite to each other, supporting each other. And it's going to be a special experience for us all. All right. Did you drop the link again for Cindy? I, yeah, I did. Um, I, I'm not sure you might want to drop it for Facebook. I don't, I'm not sure I'm going there. Should okay. Because I, she's asking and I've dropped it. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've, um, I can remember what it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. That is the link. There you go. So it's just dott.to slash BYOB, building your online business. There you go. That is it. And if you, for some reason, it's, you have issues, we'll be sending you an email with a replay and uh, you're on our mail list right now. So unless you've unsubscribed, we will be sending you promotional emails if you have not yet signed up for the boot camp. This is a big deal for us. So we will be promoting the heck out of it over the next couple of days. With that, Bob, thank you so much. You were a rock star. Uh, you guys were just great. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your engagement. And uh, till next time, have fun storming a castle. <laughs>